Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is from chapter number 6, Synchronous Motors of Electrical Machines. And here we'll be discussing example 6.3. And this is on the request of a student. So before we begin, two terms I would like to explain. Uh, one term here used is infinite bus. So some of you uh, may not be knowing what is infinite bus. So infinite bus is a long transmission line and where many generators and loads are connected. The, the property is that the frequency of the infinite bus remains constant. So even if the frequency of one or two generators fluctuates slightly, but because this is a infinite system, therefore the overall frequency remains almost same. Similarly, the terminal voltage of the finite bus remains constant. The second thing is uh, power factor leaggy, lagging and leading. Uh, Sometimes I also get confused and uh, I'll follow first of all this code. Some students follow this. Civil CIV, that means for capacitor, current is before voltage and L for inductor, for inductor voltage is before current or leading. So, like capacitor, current leads voltage, current is before V or current leads V. And generally we show with this diagram, phasor diagram, this is voltage and the current is leading. But in the case of a power diagram, this is just opposite of it. You remember it is just invert of it because there we use the angle, this angle is theta V minus theta I. And when we say that current is leading, that means theta I is greater. That means theta V minus theta I will be negative. And so this will be inverted. This will be drawn like this. And so we can conclude that the Q, this is the reactive part. This is the real part P, this is the reactive part Q. And this is the apparent power, so Q, will be negative when the power factor is leading. So this is a point you have to keep in mind. And just opposite of this in case of an inductor, it goes up, so uh, Q is positive, and you know that in case of an inductor, the power factor is lagging, power factor lags. Okay, so now come to the question. The infinite bus and figure operates at 480 volts, so 480 volts here. There are three loads. This is load number one, its power and power factor. Load number two, another induction motor both, 200 kilowatt and the power factor. And load number three is a synchronous motor. And its power, uh, or the real power is 150 kilowatt. Power factor is not given. Okay, now this we have discussed, the, there are three parts of this question. In, in one case, in the first case, the synchronous motor power factor, we, we have to take 0 0.8 power factor lagging. In the second case, it will be taking, taken as 0 0.8 power factor leading. And the third case, we have to compare the power losses in both of these cases. So let's go to the first part. So this we incorporate here in the diagram. 0 0.8 power factor lagging. So we have the data now complete. And what we need to find is what is the transmission line current. So the current formula is this one. This is derived from this relation. I hope you know this under root 3 VL IL cos theta for the total power from here IL. So what we need to find is P total for all these three total power and VL is already given 480 volt. Then we have to find cosine of theta or just theta for the combined system. Okay, so P total and theta total uh, we need to calculate. And this, because they are all lagging, so this will be the diagram, Q will be positive, 
and P the real power, Q is the reactive power and this is the form, uh, angle so from here you can see that we can say the tangent uh, theta is uh, perpendicular over base that is Q1 over P okay now the real power for load 1 is given 100 kilo so the reactive power using this formula that I was talking that Q1 can be written as P1 tangent theta and from here the power factor we know is cosine theta that means theta is cosine inverse of the power factor and so we can write P1 this value tangent and for theta cosine inverse of the power factor now the power factor for the first case is 0 0.78 so we have all the values now so the Q1 is 80.2 kilo volt ampere reactive KVAR so that is the first case now for the second case real power is given using the same formula only PFR is 0 0.8 so we find the KVR 150 KVR and similarly in the third case we follow the same technique and now it is 0 0.85 so 93 KVR okay so now we can calculate the total power we have already it is listed here so total power or the real power and then uh, the total reactive power we can calculate also we have calculated all these three so just by adding this so the overall diagram now will look like this this is the total real power this is total reactive power and as we have discussed that for current we have to find theta or cosine theta so theta we uh, using the same formula q over p tangent inverse Q 232 uh, sorry 323 and this is 450 35.7 and the power factor is 0 0.812 and lagging because the reactive power is positive so we'll write it lagging and now putting in the formula for current we have P total we have VR we have cosine theta from here so uh, the value is 667 amperes. So this is the answer for the first part. Okay, now the second part, the power factor of the synchronous generator, that is the third load, is leading. So this is now changed. Initially it was also lagging, but now it is leading. So we had calculated P and Q for all three, but these two remain same this one is changing so only Q3 here uh, we need to calculate only the reactive power for load 3 will change because of the power factor leading and the graph will be here because it is in case of a leading we know it is inverted graph and Q is negative putting in the same formula tangent theta now if you calculate from here it will be cosine inverse of 0 0.85 and since it is leading we have to put a negative sign and after calculation we get Q3 to be minus 93 kVAR and now total Q P already we have calculated in the previous slide it remains same now the total Q here is changing because Q3 is now negative 93 so 137.2 kVR so our final diagram will look like this now look here although the third one was leading but the overall uh, the reactive power is positive 137.2 that means the power factor is lagging overall power factor is lagging okay we calculate now the uh, power factor first of all using this formula so 0 0.957 lagging and then the current using the same formula only cosine theta here is changing so it is 566 ampere when this is leading when the synchronous motor is leading 
Okay, now we come to the final part. So assume that the transmission line losses are given by this formula. How do the transmission line losses compare in the two cases? Now these were the two currents we had calculated in the first case and, and the second case. So in the first case, we don't know RL, so we'll keep it as RL, putting in the value of this current. So this is the power loss in the first case. So I square R is the power loss. And for three phase, multiply by three. And in the second case, only the current is changing. So it is 961.076. So you can see that in the second case, power loss is less. Now, how do we compare? It says compare the two. We just take the ratio of the two. And so the loss in the second case is 71.47 of the first case. Or we can also say subtracting this from 100. Notice that the second case, the transmission power losses are 28.5% less than the first case. It should be less here while the power supply to the load remains the same. That is the uh, P power or the real power remains the same, 450 uh, kilowatt. So I hope you have been able to follow this. One more, one point here, just need to clarify is the synchronous motor used as a leading. So when a synchronous motor is used as a leading, that means we are using the synchronous motor as a capacitor. And I hope you have already learned that the capacitors are used for improving the power factor. So uh, in this case, the capacitor has improved the power factor and so also the losses has reduced. So I hope you have been able to follow this. Please let me know through your comments and don't forget to share it with your friends and subscribe. Thank you.